thank you for purchasing the City Master 600. We're now going to go through the operator training of this unit. We will cover three areas. The first is the pre-operation checks and preparing the unit for sweeping. The second is the actual operation of the unit. And then lastly, we'll do post-operation checks and getting it ready for the next shift. Probably the first thing uh, that's a good thing to do um, with the sweeper is to do an outside check uh, of just walk around before you do the operational checks. If the 600 is a new unit to you and you don't have uh, one in your existing fleet, one of the things you might just bear in mind is that the unit is about 1100 uh, millimeters wide, so it's just about 1.1 meters uh, if I fold the, the mirrors in. And so you can get through very, very tight areas that you wouldn't uh, normally be able to get into with machines of this size. The other thing is that because it's uh, articulated, the turning circle uh, of these units is about 2.1. So you could turn around in like a lot of aisles, even if you were in a warehouse situation. Not that that's uh, likely, but you might have uh, tight areas in parking garages. So just visually, you can check there's nothing uh, entangled in the brushes. You can just see that your tire, tires uh, look okay. And nothing's been left behind. Um, sort of attach the machine, which shouldn't be. And that's in a relatively uh, clean state from the previous day so that the operator maintained the machine. One of the first things we'll do in prepping the machine for operation is to fill the water tank. The water tank sits behind the cabin and this gray tank, that is the water tank. It takes about 150 liters of water and you can see on the indicator of when it is full. Just unscrew the cap, insert the hose and fill. We always recommend using water when you're sweeping because you want to keep this hose lubricated. So in order to do that, we need to put water into the hopper at the back. So in order to do that, we just do the latches on either side at the rear of the hopper to re release the lid. And we can raise the lid using this stainless steel uh, extension pipe, pushing it upwards and then you'll see that that fits on a little outcrop there on the top on the top of the hopper and now you're able to insert your hose. If you'd like to uh, see inside the, the, the hopper unless you're exceptionally tall and can see inside the hopper from the rear to gauge the level of water there is a kick down step either on the left or the right of the machine depending on where it's been mounted and there is a grab handle on the side which you can just grab to pull yourself up and you can see inside the hopper and you'll see that there is there along the side on one of the bolts a red washer and it's at that level where the water should be when you when you fill the water or put water should I say into the hopper in order to assist dust suppression. Once the water is at the required level, simply raise the, element, the steel pipe and then lower the hopper lid, re-engage it and reattach your clasp. We'll now look at the uh, engine checks on the unit. This might not always be done by operators themselves, but I'll include this in the video um, just in case that it is. Once the fresh water tank and the recycling water portion of the hopper is filled, you'll want to check your fuel. To unlock the diesel cap, turn the key, and you will find that it comes immediately a little bit more difficult to unscrew. When you've filled up the tank, place the diesel cap back and turn it. Once you've locked it, the cap then becomes easy to turn. Here at the rear of the machine, if your unit is fitted with a high pressure unit, then this is where it would be under this a protective rubber shroud 
and the way to, to access that is with this key. You would receive a key with the machine together with the ignition keys. Uh, basically just unlock that and then you will have access to the rear of the machine. At the rear of the machine below that access panel there is another access panel. Also with, similarly with the key just unlock it and here at the rear you will see uh, just a couple of things. Uh, you don't have to, to touch any of them really. This is your bypass tow valve so if the unit becomes ino inoperable for whatever reason and you'd like to tow it this valve must be uh, shut off. You'll see over here this is a battery isolation switch so if you hit that it will cut battery uh, power from the battery uh, to the machine to re-engage it. Just screw to the right until it's fully locked and re-engaged. Below it under a protective rubber shroud is the battery itself and it's a good thing just to keep an eye and just uh, feel the, the connectors and that's all that's here in the, the rear panel that would be of relevance really to operators just for any workshop staff that might be looking you can see through here you've got the, the fuel filter just behind there um, with a water, water tap uh, right at the bottom Normally if there's a leak of oil or water or anything like that you will see it underneath the machine but if you want to have a look at the level of the hydraulic oil it's visible just through that gap um, at the rear of the machine to the left. So that is through that gap there. And those are all the checks that uh, you need to do at the rear of the machine. The engine is located underneath the hopper and in order to access it we're going to switch on the machine and we're going to raise the hopper and then lift the panel cover that covers the engine. safety bar and lower the hopper onto the safety bar. Switch off the engine and this has got the same locking mechanism with the key as per the back access uh, panels that uh, rear access panels that I, I showed you and then once that's unlocked lift the panel and then it slides out while you're doing this um, if the machine has been used previously it's a great time just to have uh, pop your eye down to see that the chute is clear at the same time because you are here. You can see your the, your water level. Your dipstick is is over here for for your oil. And you, if you need to top up um, your oil, it's right over there. This over here, you can see just to the left, right below your air filter. You can see over here uh, your air air filter indicator. Again, while you're under the hood, just have a look at the the fan. Just see that there's no papers or debris or anything that is um, entangled in there, and you can just give a general check over um, that there are no visible, obvious visible uh, leaks uh, in the in the in the unit. And then we replace the cover, slide the cover, slide the cover back on. Once you've replaced the cover, just lock it in place again. We're going to raise the hopper again and then release the safety bar.
clever last checks that you can perform on the outside of the machine here. This cover for the radiator and pull it out. Just release it and this cover comes away so that it can be washed. You can just make sure that your radiator uh, is clean. And then just reinsert it once you're done. And lock it in place. In the middle of the articulation, you will notice that there is an, an orange sort of looking, looks like a lever, but it's not actually a brace. And this here is to lock the articulation. And that's normally if you're going to be securing the unit, if you're transporting it on a trailer or a truck. But you've got to remember, because it's articulated, and this is where your steering takes place, if this is locked, you will not have any steering. So when you're loading and offloading uh, onto a truck, just be aware that you won't have any steering. This is to stop the unit from flexing in transport and loosening the straps. But normally for operation, it's obviously released and left in this position. Another item that is secured behind the cab over here is the... <laughs> It, we call it the back scratcher, but what it is, is to dislodge um, any material that might be in the pipe. It can also be useful if the hopper is in the raised, uh, the hopper lid is in the raised position and you need to um, reach it to put it down. If you happen to be uh, a, a, on the shorter side, then you can use these, these hooks to, to hook it and, and, and put it down from the rear. Just see here, if I, if I remove it, that it comes away from the machine and you have got uh, on the on the unit itself a little screw to tighten or loosen and that allows the, the rod to, to extend. When you replace it just make sure that it is uh, tightened securely and then this gets placed back in its position at the rear of the machine. going to move inside the cab and I'm going to go through a couple of the, the, the functions starting off with the, the comfort for the operator. So we have here um, a grammar seat which is a good seat, it's an air suspension seat and you'll see that there's a window here in the front and that window when you're seated there the indicator should be in the clear sort of window in the middle and I'll just show you how that works. So depending on your weight you can either with this lever which is just in front either raise the seat or you can lower the seat it releases or or increases the air pressure of the seat and to slide forward and back you've got that lever there so you can slide it forward and back on the steering column for the comfort of the, of the operator you will see that on the right hand side here is a lever if you release that lever you can then move the console either forward or back um, for whatever is most uh, comfortable for the operator and when you've uh, established that level just lock it into place with that lever on the on the right hand side over here to the to the left you will see that there is an armrest and that armrest is also adjustable by rotating um, this adjuster underneath the armrest um, for height on the, other, on the other side where your controls are, the control arm, you can also adjust the height of that control arm at the rear with this uh, dial. Okay. To raise the control arm up and down, you press this release catch and that will then allow it to either raise or lower when exiting or entering the cab. On the left hand side, top, top side of the cab, you have the uh, fan and the air conditioner and that is the temperature adjustment. You have got a range over here of vents for your comfort and over here for the demisting you also have um, two, two vents in the front. This is just a short uh, sunshade so that the sun doesn't uh, 
to shine in your eyes, but it's still got your, uh, your light, the dome light over there. To the right, so you have, this is for your beacon light, you have your, your headlights, and you have for your, uh, for your work lights. Uh, to the right hand side of the cab, near the top, you will see that there is a place to hang your coat or jacket or cap. And finally, the only other thing not related really to operations would be down here. This over here is a uh, the window washer liquid. So if you open that up, you can just pop your the window washing liquid in there. Before we start operating, if the unit has either been transported or stored, it might have the brushes lifted into the uh, transport position. So we'll need to take it out of transport mode. So we lift it up, release the hook, and drop each brush down on both sides. Looking at the floor of the cab, you'll see that you have the accelerators to go forward, that to go back, and then you have the brake and the park brake. And the park brake is this lever here at the rear. To release it, just press it. The main brake pedal, to engage it, press it, and then engage it with your heel. Then on the left hand side you'll see the dirt, uh, the debris, the debris flap to allow large debris to pass through. If you're picking up large bottles or papers or bunches of leaves, you can press it down. And if you click it to the right, it will lock it open. And the large, that is the large debris flap in the open position to allow the larger material to get through. And if you release it, it will return to the closed position. That is the large debris flap in the closed position. On the main console itself, you have the indicator. If the unit is um, fitted with indicators, the horn is on the end. You then have the uh, standard. You then have the standard warning lights. You have the uh, emergency. Uh, lights. You also have here the window washers. If you flash it, uh, push the, the the button forward, it will then wash the window, and the rear will just activate the uh, the windscreen wiper. And on the right here, you have the throttle, and um, I will show you the throttle once we get into the uh, into the operation of the unit. Okay, let's get sweeping. So we just open up the valve to allow the water to flow through to the. Uh, recycling hose to the to the bottom of the, the, the pickup head and it will then be sucked up through the hose. You can see the screen which has the car which indicates that it's in transport mode. You can see we're not currently moving, it's in neutral and the time you've got the vacuum fan which is on, the hours and then the uh, throttle. The throttle will automatically uh, be in uh, the, the last mode, well it's currently set in, in eco mode. You have the fuel on your left and you also have the hydraulic temperature on your right. If you want to um, move or adjust anything on the screen, you use this controller which is down here, located on your on the, uh, the arm, the control arm. And if I click on that, if I click down on that, it then will, and I repeatedly click click on that, it will toggle through to the various uh, settings. If I press that silver controller and I hold it down, you will see that an arrow appears and then by turning the dial, I am then able to, to navigate. I'm able to change uh, the settings uh, on the the screen so if I want to for example look at how many hours the brush is actually used or if I want to look at if I want to change that to um, the, the when I'm actually sweeping uh, the, to record the time the overall time or just the sweeping time I can have a look at that um, I can also then talk through to the next screen 
which gives me settings, for example, my you can set the time uh, as well, and then the, there's a service screen, but most of the guys would not need to, to access that. You're going to be accessing most of the time. Now, if I just turn the toggle without, um, if I exit uh, all the uh, exit all the screens and I just turn the turn the uh, the dial, it will then default to the last six. So currently, I think the most important part for me would be to have the brush settings. So I can set them and say I'm going to leave it at sixty percent. I click again. I can then toggle the fan on and off if I like. It's going to be on. And if I want to be using water suppression, which is the spray jets out the front, I can toggle that on and off as well uh, in using this dial. When we're in uh, in work mode such as we are now, you'll see that the revs are currently sitting at about 1.9, uh, which is the sort of eco mode, but you can boost the strength of your vacuum uh, by taking it up a notch or two. So that would then take it up and you'll see that the revs are now climbed up to about uh, 2,250 uh, or give or take. And if I crank it up another notch, it will take it up to about 2,000, uh, say 2,650 or thereabouts. Take it up to about 2,630 thereabouts. So I, I normally, in fact, don't mention this uh, to a lot of uh, the operators because 99% of the time, the standard eco mode will suffice for all your needs. You shouldn't need to up it, but if you've got particularly heavy debris in, a, in, a, in an application, then that's the reason for that. But otherwise, just leave that throttle um, alone. It just creates a lot of noise, uh, burns fuel, and you're not really getting um, any additional performance uh, if you don't need it. Um, you know, you'd just be getting unnecessary additional performance. So you can change a lot of the settings, but effectively, what you all you need to know with this unit to operate it if you don't want to play with the settings all the time is to hit that green button. So if I hit that green button you'll notice you might be able to hear the revs went up uh, and the brushes automatically started engaging down the bottom which you might be able to see and I've then just using this lever over here I'm able to swing the, swing the brushes uh, in or out and they work simultaneously uh, together. So I'll swing them in and swing them out by toggling, by toggling this uh, left or right. They, as I say, they, they, they move together. And then we can just start, uh, start moving forward and sweeping. And if I want to increase as I'm driving the speed of the brushes, I just use this dial up and down to, to, uh, to do that. If I want to switch off my fan for whatever reason, I can do that. And my water spray, if it's bucketing down uh, with rain and I don't want to, I can also switch that off. And when I'm done, um, I can press the green button to stop it. But let's say, for example, I'm driving along and there's a speed hump and I don't want to stop all operations by hitting the green button. I can just toggle that back like that. The brush has come up. They will still be active, so they, they won't be uh, spinning, but they will still be active. I won't have to uh, switch it off as such. And as soon as I drop them down, they will commence uh, sweeping. That's just a shortcut way um, for you to operate the sweeping if you're going over, uh, over, over areas. Now, I showed you on this side there that you can uh, switch the, you can uh, change the, the water whether you want the sprayer on or off, but to, uh, to choose the, the degree of how much water you want on the spray jets, that is on the left hand side here, on the left hand side of my thigh. Uh, you'll see that there are two levers. This one is for the spray waters, the spray, the spray jets, and then over here, the lever next to it, that is for my, my suction hose. Uh, lubrication of the suction hose which I will always be utilizing so that's what those two two are about now if I stop sweeping and if I lift this up you will see here that the the sprayers will will shut off and that's not hitting the green button that's just using the that sort of uh, interim lever, lever as I, I would call it drop it down and my spray 
sprays will automatically uh, re-engage. Now what the difference between the sort of lever and the green button is that it won't shut down my vacuum fan so it's not uh, restarting the whole process over again. All I'm doing is lifting, lifting it up, going over a bump and putting it down or if I'm climbing onto a, a, a footpath perhaps in the middle of operations. But once I'm really finished um, uh, sweeping a particular section, I then just hit the green button over there, bang, everything pulls together, comes up and switches off. What I do recommend uh, then is you just want to switch off your um, sprayers, uh, the solenoid for that, um, and your suction so that you don't get any any water leakage um, over time if it's going to be parked for for any length any length of time and then it will return to mode, the, the the transport mode which is the car now uh, the transport mode uh, allows you to go 25 k's an hour it also allows you to go 25 k's an hour funny enough in, in work mode in this particular machine but you'll see you, it would be would be very effective sweeping um, and I think the rear speed is about 12 kilometers an hour, so you are restricted on, on, on that. So, now we've, uh, we've finished, finished sweeping, we're going to have to, we need to empty the, uh, the hopper and the tanks and uh, clean the machine. So let's see how we do that. So we've pulled up and uh, put the machine in the park. And I'll show you a trick to dump the water out of the hopper before you actually uh, tip the hopper backwards. If you want to get rid of most of the water, just push that forward. That drops the head down, and as long as that valve is open over there, it will allow the excess water in the hopper to drop down and start running out from underneath, from underneath the pickup head. So you want to be in a wash bay uh, when you do this to release most of the water. Next, we're going to release the, the hopper catches at the back on both sides. And then raise the hopper. When the hopper is in this sort of position, we want to open up the belly plates. Open up the belly tank so that it will allow the hopper, the belly tank, to empty. Engage the safety bar. And then you can see right into the hopper wash out. Rinse out the hopper as well as you can, remembering to clean right under in the belly plate. Once that is done, you can also clean the shroud if necessary. While this tap is uh, still open and the uh, suction head is still down to allow the water to flow out, you might also take the opportunity, while the hopper is in the raised position, to clean out this pipe. This pipe comes from the belly pan all the way down, and then it would either flow through to that hose there which goes down to your suction head or alternatively it's teed off and you can actually empty the dirty water there if you want to rinse that out and it's oh, you should rinse this out um, if you just undo it here just undo that and take the, the hose just spray water down there and you'll see that it will rinse it through to the pickup head underneath and keep this hose clean. That is a very important part of it because if you don't keep this hose clean, this recycle hose clean, and you will get dirt because the, the aluminium sieves on the side of the hopper, they will filter 
the dirty water before it goes into the belly pan. But that pipe there that you can see there is where the water, the dirty water will go down and you do get small debris that goes through. And if you don't clean this hose out, it can uh, build up solid, almost like cement, and then it becomes a mission to clean it. So just rinse it out every time and you will never have a problem. So we just disconnect this hose, which is at the back here. Put the uh, hose through there with the, the uh, suction head down and that valve open and you can do that. You also at the bottom here underneath, if you just open that up um, and do the same thing, we just place it on there uh, to be safe. When I, stick, when I stick the water gun down there, you'll see it will come out of that, will come out of that pipe and flush that as well. All this of course being done in a suitable location such as a, a designated wash bay. And then when you're done with it, just reconnect this hose. And you're done. I'm just going to replace this at the bottom as well. And I'm going to close this because I'm finished sweeping. Again, because you're cleaning it out, just have a look down, make sure there's nothing blocking your hose. And it's a good idea to just um, rinse that hose out as well. Now we're done with the major clean out at the rear. Just going to lower the safety bracket and we'll start the machine and lower the hopper. to lock the belly plate. With the front gear, the brushes and the suction head still in the load position, this uh, provides you with a, a great opportunity to take the suction head out and also clean it and return it. Now, the brushes here in the front, if you look at the retaining cables which stop the, the brushes from swinging out too far, these are quite useful because what it enables you to do is to um, remove the brushes. Just slip the slip the cables off and then you can move the brush to the side and we do with the same with the cable on the other side just lift it up slip it and then we can move the brush to the other side and what that does is it just exposes the suction head and makes it easy for you to take it off so to make it really easy to to take it off and put it back on you have got a hydraulic lock on the side here which we'll just put to the uh, closed position and what that little lever or it means for you should I say is that this the the actual head that is holding the suction head on won't go down too far so that it becomes difficult to slide it back back in and I'll we'll see what I mean now so the Try and get the best angle for you to see what I'm about to do. I'm going to put my foot uh, on this on this lever, push it down, stick my hand in, and I'm going to pull the suction head out. So this was the lever over here that I stood across with my foot. It then releases the unit, and you can pull it out. It's got casters on the back, and that exposes the head. Give it a good, a good wash down, and then underneath the machine as well. Just give it a, give it a good spray out. Spray your brushes as well. We'll then flip the head over again, and we can slide it back in. And because you'll see there, 
that the frame onto which this slides is still at the same level we can we can slide the, this uh, suction head more easily uh, underneath it so we just push it underneath line it up as close as you can just push it home with your foot and again that lever there at the end just slide that across and she's locked in place and of course don't forget to just push this lever back down again into the position otherwise the suction head will not lower and then you'll wonder why you're not sucking anything up and then you can just bring your brushes back into the center and um, rehook these cables uh, over the end. I'm doing this with one hand, so I'm just going to uh, shut the camera off and do it uh, do it uh, off offline. So everything's back together again, and then if you're finished for the day and you're going to transport it back, you you might want to uh, hook it again onto the machine to take her home like that. And so she's she's ready to go. So that's a general guide for the operation and maintenance of the CityMaster 600. This video is not designed to replace the uh, operator manual which we encourage you to go through um, and where possible have on-site training as and when uh, that is um, again possible within the current circumstances. So I hope you have um, sufficient information for now uh, on the unit. Please speak to your, your local representative. Um, for additional input or training or refer to the oper operator and safety manual. I do apologize if this video was done a little bit slowly but uh, this uh, video was prepared for the guys in Queensland and they are a little bit slower than us down here in New South Wales in, in Sydney um, hence the fact that we keep beating them in the state of origin uh, rugby. So. Take care and um, yeah, happy days with your City Master 600.